What's going on, people? Mike C-Town here with my top 35 favorite non-hip-hop albums of 2015. Uh, but before we get started, let me just say that this was a great year for music, but it was also a sad year for music because we lost a hero. Uh, that's Lemmy. Lemmy from Motorhead. It was bad enough having Phil go earlier in the year, but I never saw this coming. Lemmy was supposed to outlive every single one of us, so... It's a sad time, um, yeah, man, a, a rock and roll icon, a heavy metal hero, rest in peace, Lemmy. So on to the list. Uh, last year I did a top 20, and this year there were just so many fucking awesome albums that 20 wasn't going to cut it. It was actually stressing me out trying to narrow this list down. I know 35 is a weird number, but I could not shave 5 off of this list. I actually had a top, God, it was like a top 37 or 38 or something weird like that. So, so yeah, 35 was the best I can do, guys. So, let's uh, let's get going. At number 35, we have the Choshwin with Heart of Akamon. This is only low on the list because I heard it hella late. But this is a great album. The black metal parts are very well done. The folkier parts are beautifully played, man. This is a great record. At number 34, we have Bow and Dusk with Homeward Path. This is their follow-up to last year's Black Clouds Rising. However, it's not quite as good as Black Clouds. It's still great, though. Great melodic black metal that's heavy on the awesome riffs. At number 33, we have Funest with, I'm probably going to butcher this, but Le Trail du Charnier. This came out of nowhere, man. Great black metal. Nothing super special, but just very well played and very well executed. At number 32, we have Chelsea Wolf with Abyss. I loved this record when it first came out, but for some reason I just kind of forgot about it. But then when I came back to it relatively recently, I was reminded of how great it is. It's heavy, intense, and beautiful all at the same time. At number 31, we have Thulkandra with Ascension Lost. Riffs, 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 man. Do you like Dissection? If you do, then you'll love this album. It's absolute dissection worship. That's killer the entire way through. At number 30, we have Adele with 25. Yes, I have a soft spot for Adele. I love 21, and if I was doing these videos back then, that album would have been in my top five easily. But 25, this album is absolutely fantastic, but it came out a bit late in the year, and it wasn't different enough from 21 for me to really love it. But it's still a great record, great songwriting, and her amazing voice. At number 29, we have Ghost with Meliora. Ghost just keeps putting out solid records, and this one is no exception. Great songs, great production. They're just on a roll with putting out really cool heavy metal records. At number 28, we have Purient with Frozen Niagara Falls. This is an hour and a half of absolute discomfort and tension, man. Great, noisy songs coupled with beautiful soundscapes. At the end of the day, I can just say that it's an experience, a serious experience, but one that I really enjoyed. At number 27, we have Algiers with their self-titled record. Um, it almost feels like this record was forgotten about too, but it's one of the most interesting post-punk albums to come out in a long time to me. Their combination of post-punk and gospel or soul influences is just really, really, really cool. There's some serious emotion on this record. At number 26, we have Faith No More with Soul Invictus. This actually fell a bit low on my list simply because I loved it when it first came out, and I think that was the excitement of a brand new Faith No More record, but that excitement faded for a while. However, I still think this is a rad record. At number 25, we have Ethereal Shroud with They Became the Falling Ash. This was pretty constant in my best of list. It's dark, it's cold, it's atmospheric black metal, and it just sounds so perfectly sad. At number 24, and I'm not sure how you pronounce this because I've never heard anybody say this out loud, but I'm going to say it's Twa Corby's with The Clamoring. And I found this album a bit late, which is weird considering how much I admire Tony Wakeford, but this is incredible neo-folk that seriously harkens back to the older Soul Invictus days, like maybe even more than the last Soul Invictus album, which I love, but this album is great. At number 23, we have Honoric with Casket Dream Veneration. This is a super bizarre black metal record to me. Great songwriting and a really interesting take 
on black metal. It's almost avant-garde sounding like maybe Arcturus or Ved Buen End. Weird riffs and perfect vocals. At number 22, we have Bill Fay with Who Is The Sender? Gorgeous, folky album with pianos, acoustic guitar, strings. A great addition to Bill Fay's catalog. At number 21, we have Luvia with Eternidad Solome. There's just so much atmosphere in this record. Great riffs drowned in mystery and depression. This whole thing just sounds like a sad, rainy day, like, like something you'd listen to after a loved one passes. Something that emotes that feeling without being cheesy. It's just an incredibly haunting album. At number 20, we have Cradle of Filth with Hammer of the Witches. Poser alert, poser alert. Yeah, I'm not about to sit here and give any excuses for this record being in my top best of list outside of the fact that it's a killer record. This is a return to form for Cradle of Filth, and I could not be happier with it. At number 19, we have Cal Decapitation with the Anthropocene Extinction. One of my favorite releases by these guys. Great death metal with influences from all over the place, but they all come together to make a damn near flawless death metal album. At number 18, we have Serpent's Lair with Circumbulating the Stillborn. Great atmospheric black metal to have some of the more interesting riff writing and songwriting to come out of black metal in a long time. At times it reminds me of Megwa, but all around it has some killer riffs on this album. Number 17, we have Revenge with Behold Total Rejection. Nothing revolutionary or genre bending with this album, just some incredibly nasty, ugly, super heavy, grind, war metal, whatever the fuck you want to call it. I thought it was just okay at first, but I started finding myself returning to this album quite a bit and enjoying it more and more as the year progressed. At number 16, we have Kwan with Sorny Nay. Not a fan of Doom, but this is the type of shit that I absolutely love. Super dark, melancholic stuff in the vein of Catatonia or My Dying Bride. But this is a beautiful record with some great atmosphere. Number 15, we have Panopticon with Autumn Eternal. Panopticon never goes wrong, man. Great atmospheric black metal. I'm still a little bit disappointed that they took away a lot of the folk influence, but the black metal here is top-notch. Austin Lung. Kudos. Number 14, we have Into Another with Omens. This is their first release in 20 years and they did not miss a step. This record is so good and sounds just like back when I first fell in love with this band. Number 13, we have Miss Ming with, I'm not even going to try to pronounce this name, super dark, super noisy, chaotic black metal with a fresh new sound, believe it or not. But this record is absolutely killer. At number 12, we have Achilles with The Dreaming Eye. Fast, cold, dark, and ritualistic black metal. I can't say how many times I found myself returning to this album. At number 11, we have Bjork with Volnicura. What can I say about a new Bjork album, man? She definitely went a bit darker with this release than I expected, and I have to say, it worked out quite well for her. At number 10, we have Coil with Backwards. How is this record not on more people's list? Is it because it's older material just released now? Like, I don't know what the rules are to these lists, but fuck, this shit is fucking great. Anytime Core releases something, even though it would be posthumous at this point, I jump to listen, man. And this is great experimental electronic stuff. While I love the material on New Backwards, I think this is actually way better. You know, I'm surprised it took this long to get released, so Danny Hyde, Thank you for the work you put into this project because it's amazing. At number nine, we have Black Solis with Mysteries. This is an album that I did not really care for at first. I think it's because I didn't quite get it. Then one day it totally clicked. And since I've had this revelation, I found their weird, super raw, bizarrely composed music to be extremely captivating. Had I come back and given this another shot earlier in the year, this definitely would have been higher on my list. At number eight, we have Tribulation with Children of the Night. I say the same thing every time I mention this band. It's Death Metal Sisters of Mercy. So incredibly good, well-written, dark, and gothy, catchy songs. At number seven, we have Marduk with Frunschwein. I honestly didn't expect this record to be this good. Like, Marduk totally delivered on some fast, angry, and aggressive black metal. Like, there was a while I found myself listening to this album weekly. At number six, we have Slater Kinney with No Cities to Love. 
One of my favorite bands returns with a fantastic record that sounds like they never stopped writing and recording together. I mean it when I say that this record has some of my favorite songs by them on it. Number five, we have Biters with Electric Blood. It's so weird how much I love this album. I've loved pretty much everything these guys have done, but I feel like with this record, they've perfected their sound. It's just well-written and super fun rock and roll. Number four, we have Megwa with Exercises in Futility. This record is stupid good. Granted, it's not as good as with Hearts Towards None because I find that record to be pretty much flawless, but this record is still awesome. Some great riffs with that classic Megwa sound. And people calling this boring, I honestly don't know what the fuck you've been listening to. At number three, we have Leviathan with Scar Sighted. This embodies everything I love about black metal. The darkness, the chaos, the passion. And this record has actually bumped itself up to be one of my favorite releases by Jeff Whitehead. It's the most suffocating and uncomfortable black metal record that I've heard in years. And if you don't know black metal, that's a good thing. At number two, we have The Weeknd with Beauty Behind the Madness. I'm sure it doesn't surprise anyone that this record's in my top five. It absolutely blew me away. It's superb songwriting, it's dark, it's catchy, and it's just so well written to me. And I would never think a poppy modern R&B album could ever hold my attention this way, but this did. This record seriously gets played for me at least once a week. And my favorite album of 2015, Virgin Forest VF3. I cannot praise this album enough. It's great, catchy, dark, alternative, electronica, whatever the fuck you want to call it, man. I seriously can't listen to this album enough. This record gets played for me multiple times a week. Anytime I'm in the mood for something catchy, this goes on. Anytime I'm in the mood for something playful, this record goes on. Or something smooth, this record goes on. This record was also my number one in my mid-year video, so if you guys have not heard this record by now, I urge you to listen to it today. Get your life together. Check this out because this record is just so good. So that's it for my list of favorite non-hip-hop albums of 2015. Just remember, this is my list, not your list. If you'd like to make a list, you should make a list and call it your list, but do not confuse your list with my list because your list will never be my list and my list will never be your list. But please put your list in the comment section down there so I can see what albums I may have missed because that is the only purpose of making these lists. Sharing albums that we may not have heard. This is not a pissing contest over who has better taste in music or who can compose a better and cooler list, all right? It's not a contest to see whose dick is bigger because my dick will always be bigger. It's not a fair fight. All right, so as usual, thank you for living, thank you for loving, thank you for being you, and I will see you guys next time. All right? Peace!